my name is Everton Collin. Um, this is my final project for the dynamic optimization course entitled Nonlinear Model Predictive Control Applied to Distillation Column. Uh, the motivation is the optimal operation of distillation processes. So over the years, uh, linear MPC was extensively used to optimize the efficiency of distillation columns. Uh, the model is a linear approximation uh, at the nominal operation point. Its main limitations uh, are related to low extrapolation capability. Uh, on the other hand, the non-linear MPC is practically not used on distillation columns. So uh, some of these, its advantages are it can be built using first principles equations. So it could have a better extrapolation capability. And with that, uh, it can drive the system to different operation points, like in a plant startup or changing the product specification. Also, it can provide a quicker stabilization when high disturbances are present. Its main disadvantages are complex modeling, high computational time, and limited number of software solutions. The objective uh, was to develop a first principle model to simulate the behavior of a distillation column. Uh, the chosen approach was to start with the simplest case, a binary distillation column, several simplification assumptions, and limit the number of disturbances. So it can be verified the computational time needed to solve the nonlinear MPC problem and the controller performance. The model is based on the distillation of a mixture of benzene and toluene uh, with 37 uh, stages of separation with a total condenser. And the following assumptions were made. Uh, constant liquid holds up on the entire system. No vapor holds up in the column. Feed entering uh, as a liquid at its boiling point. Accumular feed composition, constant pressure, and the vapor liquid equilibrium is calculated using modified Raoult's law uh, which is only valid for low pressures. Uh, here's a quick system overview. The important streams on these systems are uh, the feed entering the column, the distillate and the bottom product leaving the column, the boil-up vapor produced at the row boiler that returns to the tower, the cooled reflux that enters the top of the tower, and we also have two energy streams. There's a row boiler that adds heat and a condenser that removes heat from the system. Uh, looking inside the column, there are several plates, trays, that contain liquid holds up. The liquid falls from uh, the top to the bottom, getting richer on the heavier components, while the vapor rises up to the tower, getting richer on the light components. At each plate, each stage, uh, a vapor liquid equilibrium develops at a certain temperature. Uh, now presenting the model variables. The constants are the pressure, the feed temperature and composition, condenser hold up, reboiler hold up, and hold up at each tray. Uh, the variables that the model will calculate are liquid composition at each stage, temperature at each stage, distillate flow rate, bottom product flow rate, internal liquid flow, internal vapor flow, and vapor compositions at each stage. Uh, additional variables are the number of stages, the feed tray, the feed liquid fraction, feed liquid and vapor composition, saturation pressure parameters from the Antoine equation, excess Gibbs model parameters. Uh, so the equations can be divided in three sections, mass balance, component mass balance, and vapor liquid equilibrium. Uh, we, here we have the mass balance and the condenser drum and over the entire system. Uh, the component mass balance at the feed tray at uh, the tray above, the component mass balance on the stripping and ratification sections, the component mass balance on the row boiler and the condenser. Uh, the vapor liquid equilibrium equations are calculated for all trays and for the row boiler. The, we have the modified Raoult law, Antoine equation, Wilson equation for two components, and bubble pressure for two components. Okay, so for the simulation. Uh, the model was implemented in Python 3.6 using the Gecko library. Before the discretization, the model is a differential algebraic equation system with 268 equations. The step of simulation is 0.1 minutes. 
For each step, the time to solve the problem is measured. I use the IPOP solver with three collocation nodes. Here we can see that the changes in the inputs uh, and disturbances lead to change in the controlled variables. Uh, on this simple uh, dynamic simulation step, uh, the average time to solve each cycle is about 0.6 seconds. Now in the estimation part, I created a thermodynamic rigorous model in a process simulator tool to test the simplified nonlinear model. I used the easy process simulator with the Peng Robinson equation of states, SCMR mixing rule, and Unifac Dortmund as the XX Gibbs model. I also included uh, this time an appropriate noise level to the inputs and to the outputs of the simulator. This time the gecko was configured as a moving horizon estimator, and I let the estimator change the parameters of the XX Gibbs model. Uh, the simulator is also configured the same way as before, so we measure the time to solve the problem for each step. This is the sensitivity analysis relating how the change in the parameters affect the controlled variables. And you can see that the estimator has a lot of, of degrees to, to adapt the, the model. Here is a summary of the estimation part. The top temperature and the bottom temperatures are available measurements. The excess Gibbs model parameter values are estimated at each step by the moving horizon estimator. And we verify the predictions for the distillation and bottom problem compositions. Here we can see that the MHE was able to keep up with the process simulator, predicting the compositions with little error. The average time to solve each cycle was about two seconds. And finally, we get to the control part. Now the idea is to use the simplified nonlinear model developed in Gecko to drive the process simulator to a desired state. We keep the same configuration in the process simulator and maintain the noise level. Uh, we configure the Gecko application to work as an MPC. The reflux and boil up are the manipulated variables. And the cycle is configured uh, like before, the same way. This is the sensitivity analysis uh, relating how the change in the manipulated variables affect the control variables. And here is a summary of the control part. The top temperature and the bottom temperature are available measurements as well. Uh, the reflux and boil up are manipulated by the MPC. Feed is a disturbance. The, uh, and then we can control with the MPC the top and bottom temperatures and also the distillate composition and bottom product composition. When we configure the model to control the temperatures, we can see that it manipulates the reflux and boil up to do so. And uh, the average time to solve each cycle was about one second. Now, if we try to control the composition, the MPC was able to drive the system to the desired set points. But in the end, we got a little offset due to model differences. This can be handled by inserting a bias when a measure is available or by running the MHE alongside the MPC. Uh, the average time to solve each cycle was about one second as well. Uh, here is a simulated a condition of disturbance similar to what is encountered in real industrial applications. Uh, at the same time, it is configured several different set points. Uh, we can see that the MPC was able to get there, even with the presence of the high level of disturbances. And in the end, uh, the average time to solve each cycle remains about one second. So, uh, the conclusions uh, I've got. Uh, the simplified model, based on first principles equations, was able to control the rigorous thermodynamic process simulator with a very good performance. Uh, it was able to quickly drive the system to different operating points. And uh, the controller was able to maintain the controlled variables within specified set points with the presence of large disturbances uh, that are measured. Uh, but the most impressive thing that uh, I thought is that it was able to run at uh, almost six times faster than real time, indicated that it could indeed be used on real applications. The next steps uh, for this research would be to implement a model for multi-component separation. 
calculate the fugacity of the vapor phase using the equation of states, so the model can be used on higher pressure separations, uh, to also include uh, different disturbances, uh, consider pressure drops along the column, and also the hold-up dynamics in the trays and also in the condenser and the reboiler. And that's it. Okay, fantastic, Everton. And Everton was also the same one who provided our uh, pendulum animation, so you guys remember that. Uh, okay, so uh, t a little bit of time for questions. Any questions on the and, and I'll just I'll just echo the importance of of doing separations control. Uh, you know, in the refinery, 40 to 60 percent of the energy consumed is on separation. And it accounts for typically about 6% of total U.S. energy use each year. If you look at you know, total energy use, distillation columns are you know, up there as like one of the main energy consumers besides like transportation uh, itself. So uh, excellent work. So Everton, I just had a, a question uh, for you. So linear model predictive control is definitely, uh, you know, Probably the you know the most commonly applied to distillation columns in industrial applications. So why nonlinear MPC? Why do we need to use a nonlinear model in this case? Uh, my first idea, uh, well, the first proposal for for uh, the project was to to control the the, the propanizer case. But uh, I, I as uh, for the limited time that was available to to develop the, this project. Uh, I could not uh, evolve the model to a multi-component case and also to use uh, 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 for higher pressures as I only use the, the modify Raoult's law. But uh, w when um, uh, in, in, the, in the refinery, if we, in the, in the deprotonizer uh, column, uh, for example, uh, depending on uh, economic reasons, uh, it is isn't interesting to, to maximize the flow rate of the LPG separated from uh, live straight run nafta uh, stream, or uh, uh, to maximize the, the straight run nafta uh, flow rate. So um, uh, the, the 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 split between the the C4 in, in a column like this, it's a um, it's a very sensible thing. Um, there's a not uh, a lot of gain, but if you consider a 24/7 approach. And also the, the energy uh, uh, implications of the, the the separation of systems. We can have a lot of profit if uh, we have a, a, uh, an MPC that can uh, predict the behavior of the the column uh, for different operation points. Um, I think in the future, if I if I can get you to to model a nonlinear uh, MPC to work with a column like this that can predict pretty well the compositions. For different stages, um, you you can insert an uh, economic uh, object function uh, at there, and you can in, uh, when, if it's fed by the the market and the the stream values, it can do something that would look like a uh, dynamic RTO, which we, you, it will it will be able to. At uh, its uh, its cycle, at each time it, that it runs, it will be able to to get to the maximum profit for the operation. The the steady state RTO it, it takes a lot of time to to do that, and at that uh, inter intermediate time there's a, a loss that could be handled by a nonlinear MPC. That's what I think at least if it eventually is going to work. My my main doubt was about the the time to run its cycle. Uh, in this uh, simpler, simpler model, it's uh, totally able to, to, to be run in real-time applications. But what, what remains to be seen if, if we, uh, as we get the model to, to uh, a more complex state, uh, what time it will be needed to run uh, for each cycle. That's the idea. Okay. Fantastic. Any other questions? Okay, excellent uh, application there, Everton. Thank you so much for presenting.